Mandela Washington Fellowship uh, impacts a lot on the legacy of Nelson Mandela because through the experiences that we've learned here there is certain things that we really didn't have a full appreciation of so in terms of tolerance in terms of being open-minded to accept people from different communities of different religious sections or ability sections or gender I think ultimately the important thing is you just have to be able to appreciate they are different and they deserve the same rights that you deserve. Nelson Mandela is uh, notably one of the greatest leaders we've had and I think the fellowship will inspire the younger generation of Africans to be more open to listening to their people when they try to address uh, challenges that their communities are facing. You have to lead by example. You have to get down and be involved in what you're trying to get the people to do. It doesn't matter how small or how big or how important you are. I think it's key um, what Mandela displayed as a servant leader, what Mandela displayed as a resilient leader. Um, and for a lot of us, we look to him, for a lot of us, he role models um, what leadership we should be tapping into and which principles we should take from the kind of leadership that he displayed. So there's this really heavy responsibility on each fellow to really carry that legacy. Definitely it is a change and a shift from what we know, who have come to know what leadership is. And this new wave is bringing in a, a positive energy. And this new wave is bringing in an energy where the people are back at the center. Just innately where people find themselves in communities and looking for different avenues to empower communities and make sure that we are really improving people's lives. My understanding about servant leadership really has to do with not being able to impose yourself because of the position that you have, but leveraging on that position to bring others up and to be able to offer a shoulder to mentor others in a very humble way, valuing the position you have, number one, but number two, valuing the people that you lead. Titles are just for a moment, but impacting life is for a lifetime. My idea of servant uh, leadership is stepping aside from who you are and serving the people, being there for them, being uh, focused on them and not you. I can't do it alone. It is the love for my people. So being a servant leader is that you, you, you commit your time, you commit your resources, you commit every energy you have to go forward and achieve, and knowing that whatever you are doing is going to benefit the community. Don't take credit. It is never you. It is about the people you are serving. I believe that if we continue, by, just by the name, is in inspiring more people, more young people to say, okay, we all know Mandela and what he has done for South Africa is an inspiration for us. So we need to continue because the change we are talking about is not by words. Mandela puts words in actions. And so this is what is inspiring other people to take actions. It is time for new heads to lift the burdens. It is in your hands now. The future is in our hands and the choice is ours to make, to make the world a better place. I say the world because although I am African, but that doesn't limit my involvement and engagement only on the African continent. Mandela Washington Fellowship will enhance the legacy of uh, Nelson Mandela because when you were in that hall, brilliant young women and men we had people who have committed to bring in gender equality, to bring in food security, to bring in security, education, health. And these are the things that Mandela fought daily to see it. Mandela once said, it is left to us to lead our continent. 
And when you give young leaders the skills to be a better person tomorrow, then that's just what Mandela wanted to see. The young people being empowered to be leaders, the young people being empowered to take up positions, the young people being empowered to impact the world so they can see a better future, not for them, but for the generations to come by. And now, please welcome to the stage Assistant Secretary of State for Educational and Cultural Affairs, Marie Royce. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. morning. I'm Marie Royce, Assistant Secretary of State for the Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs, known as ECA. ECA leads all educational, professional, and cultural exchange programs for the United States Department of State. One of my Bureau's flagship programs is the Medela Washington Fellowship as part of the Young African Leaders Initiative, better known as YALI, Y-A-L-I. And it's my pleasure to be here and officially open the 2019 summit for this year's nearly 700 fellows. Congratulations. Each of you was selected out of more than 38,000 applicants as Mandela Washington Fellows. Again, this is a big accomplishment and it deserves applause. Yes. You have each demonstrated leadership skills and your strong commitment to your home communities, the continent of Africa, and to the world at large. You exemplify the mission of our Bureau to build mutual understanding between the people of the United States and other countries around the world. This year's summit theme is inspiring innovation and growth through leadership. Throughout this summit, you'll hear from high-ranking officials in both the public and the private sectors. You will have opportunities to network and discuss how to advance our shared commitment to Africa. The United States is investing in Africa. In June, the White House launched its new Prosper Africa strategy. This strategy details President Trump's goals of promoting long-term prosperity, security, and stability in U.S.-Africa relations. And recently, with the strong banking of the Trump administration, our Congress passed bipartisan legislation called the Better Utilization of Investments Leading to Development, or B-U-I-L-D, the BUILD Act. This law offers promising opportunities for more U.S. direct investment in Africa. We are opening markets for American businesses, growing Africa's middle class, promoting youth employment opportunities, and improving the business climate. The Mandela Washington Fellowships creates vital partnerships between Americans and each of you who are here with us today. And at this time, I'd like to recognize the 27 outstanding U.S. universities and colleges representing 20 states and the District of Columbia, which hosted the fellows over the past six weeks and when I call your university, I'm going to ask you to make a little noise, raise your hand, get excited. Can, can you do that for me? You can do that for me? OK, great. All right, all right, all right. So I think what I'm going to do here is now, if you want to stand, you can, but you have to sit right down, because I can't have everyone standing. So we're going to, so I'll stay the first one. Are, are you ready? Okay, Appalachian State University. Air 
Arizona State University. <laughs> Boise State University. Bridgewater State University. Clark Atlanta University. Drake University. Drexel University. Georgia State University. Indiana University. Kansas State University. <laughs> Lehigh University. You're doing pretty good out there. All right, Northwestern University. Oklahoma State University. The University of Virginia and the College of Women, Mary, with IREX subgrantee, the Presidential Precinct. Please raise. Yay. Rutgers, the State University of New Jersey. All right, Syracuse University. Texas Tech University. University of California, Davis. University of Delaware. University of Georgia. <laughs> University of Iowa. <laughs> University of Nebraska Lincoln. University of Nevada, Reno. University of Notre Dame. The University of Texas at Austin. The, the University of Wisconsin, Madison. And last but not least, Virginia Tech. All right, I hope I didn't miss anyone. All right, let's give each other a round of applause. All right, thank you to these institutions for the expertise, resources, and hospitality that you and your community shared with the fellows this summer. Now, last month was my first official visit to Africa as Assistant Secretary. I had impactful visits to both Ghana and Liberia, where I met very impressive alumni. In Ghana, I was able to launch the Academy of Women Entrepreneurs, and I'm launching this, yes, in, in 10 African countries. It's part, of, it's part of the White House initiative called the WGDP, Women's Global Development and Prosperity Initiative, and our goal is to bring more women around the world into the global workplace. Isn't that amazing? So, yes. And then during my time in Liberia, I had the opportunity to tour a variety of our alumni excuse me, entrepreneurial businesses in Monrovia. I'd like to show you a brief video of that very tour, which shows the impact that people-to-people -people ties and entrepreneurs can have on our economic development at the local level. And you're going to see in the video one of the entrepreneurs, Roland Washington, who, who yes, he's a 2018 Mandela Washington Fellow who's based in Monrovia. I'd like to see the video. Thank you. 
Welcome to Liberia. I'm Marie Royce, Assistant Secretary of Educational and Cultural Affairs at the U.S. Department of State. Please come along with me as I visit alumni of our exchange and other programs in the heart of Liberia's capital, Monrovia. Yamazawu runs the colorful Bosch Boss textile craft store, an enterprise she started with support and advice from a Peace Corps volunteer. One More Bookstore, a children's bookstore and reading room in Monrovia, was founded by acclaimed Liberian-American author Wayetu Moore. Wayetu is the daughter of our Fulbright alumna, Mamawa Freeman Moore. Mamawa directs the Honors College at the University of Liberia. Angie Howard participated in Liberia's African Women's Entrepreneurship Program in 2013 and now runs a food processing business that sells Made in Liberia products. USAID has provided support and training to the Daily Talk Chalkboard, a low-tech and very popular source of news that explains daily events to thousands of passers-by in Monrovia. Next stop is the Creative Zone. Graphic designer Roland Washington was a 2018 Mandela Washington Fellow who studied at the University of Texas at Austin. Now, in addition to running his own marketing and design agency, he is developing a ride-sharing app. Check out this t-shirt I just made. The hard work, resourcefulness, and resolve that Liberians are demonstrating every day is both impressive and inspiring. I've had such a wonderful visit to Liberia. Thanks for joining me. What do you think of that video? Pretty great. Yeah, it's amazing. Thank you. Now that you're done with your program, almost, you're about to join an impressive group of over 4,000 Mandela Washington Fellowship alumni. They are waiting to connect with you as well. For example, if you'd like to talk about an idea for a business venture, you might connect with Yali alumni and find someone like 2014 alumna, Regina Ajare Hanu from Ghana. Regina is an entrepreneur. She helped enterprises in Ghana grow their business through the use of technology. People with disabilities can use technology to better integrate in their communities because of her good work. Are you interested in creating policy? then reach out to Arali Adam Sule Zumaru, who is making an impact in the telecommunications industry. Just two years after completing her fellowship in 2015, the president of Benin appointed Arali as state minister in charge of digital economy and communications in the country. Yes, isn't this amazing? She is bringing mobile services to 635 million Africans who previously did not have access to the internet. So in conclusion, we look very forward to engaging with you during the summit. I invite you to stay in touch with us to build and sustain a strong, democratic, and prosperous Africa. Thank you.